Hello, and welcome to today's case. Before we start, we would like to say our respect goes out to those who knew and loved Joy Morgan. Joy Morgan was born on February 12, 1998, in South London, where she lived with her loving family. Joy had two younger sisters, Dion and Shona, and an older brother named Earl, whom she was especially close to. Her mother, Carol, worked tirelessly as a caretaker, putting in long hours to make ends meet for her family. Despite their financial difficulties, Joy's family cherished their time together. Joy was known for her kind heart, her dedication to her studies, and her commitment to making a difference in the world. Growing up, Joy lived up to her name. She was a beautiful and happy girl, always having a bright smile that lit up the room. According to her family, Joy was an absolute pleasure to be around, spreading happiness wherever she went. However, Joy's life would take a turn for the worst. In 2006, when she was only eight years old, Joy lost her uncle Prince to cancer. Six years later, Joy would lose her stepdad to the same illness as her uncle. And then, in 2014, Joy's world was turned upside down again by the loss of her biological father, who took his own life. After her father's loss, Joy turned to YouTube for comfort and religious teachings. One day, she stumbled upon a video from a church called Israel United in Christ. Intrigued, Joy delved deeper into the church's teachings and eventually became a staunch follower. Israel United in Christ was founded in 2003 in New York and was a part of a movement known as the Black Hebrews Israelites. With around 40 places of worship across the U.S. and the world, Israel United was led by Bishop Nathaniel Israel. Despite its religious teachings, Israel United had a controversial reputation and was even considered a hate group by some. The church had strict rules that all members were expected to follow, including the segregation of men and women who were not allowed to be alone in the same room or sleep together before marriage. Women in the church held no formal rank and were referred to only as sisters. They were also expected to address all men as sir. Anyone who broke these rules or questioned the leaders of the church faced severe consequences, including demotion, punishment, or expulsion. Joy was drawn to the strict rules and teachings of the church and became a dedicated follower, embracing everything the church had to offer. After joining the UK branch of the church located in East London, Joy underwent a drastic transformation, becoming distant and unrecognizable to her family. Her mother, Carol, watched in horror as Joy began to treat her family as if they were dirty or sinful, simply because they had not converted to her faith. She became someone different. She became to separate herself from her family, which was important to her, because I know Joy loves her family. The teachings of the church, just it just seems like a cult and she just got swept away. Well, because like, in the Israelite church, you can't be Israelite if, you're, if your father's a white man. So she would like be like to my little sister, you're a white devil. And it was like, whoa. In an attempt to intervene, Carol took away Joy's laptop, but this would result in a fight between the two. After this fight, Joy would leave her house, becoming homeless for a time before being given a place to stay by the local government. The distance between Joy and her family only continued to grow as she became more entrenched in the church. She saw the members of her church as her new family, casting aside her blood relations. Joy's obsession with the church became all-consuming, and her family feared what would happen to her as she became more deeply entrenched in the cult-like organization. In 2018 on Christmas Day, Carol was hoping to reunite with her daughter Joy, who was part of a new family. She begged Joy to come to her aunt's house for a big celebration on Boxing Day, but Joy refused, saying that her church prohibited the celebration of Christmas. Carol's mother tried to convince Joy that it was just a small family gathering and not a celebration, but Joy stood firm and told her mother no. This would be the last time Carol heard from her daughter Joy. Days went by without any word from Joy, and Carol didn't think much of it as Joy often went off the grid. On February 7, 2019, Carol received a distressed call from Joy's roommates. They informed Carol that they had not seen or heard from Joy since Christmas and that Joy had not paid her portion of the rent. Knowing something was wrong, Carol tried calling her daughter's church, but no one answered or returned her calls. Concerned for her daughter's safety, Carol went to the police and reported Joy as a missing person. 
did not believe there was anything wrong. I thought there was something wrong with my phone, then there was something wrong with Joy's phone, and I didn't get her. Then there was other things happening, it was happening, and I was phoning her, phoning her. All of a sudden, February 6th, I was going, hold on a second, dear. It's six weeks. I will never not feel any guilt until the day they bury me. An investigation was promptly initiated with the police interviewing everyone who knew Joy, including members of her church. The church members told the police that Joy was a regular member, but the last time they had seen her was at a church event on December 26th. Despite knowing that Joy was missing, they never informed Carol or the police. The church members thought Joy had left the church because her number was deleted from their telegram chat on December 28th. However, they were shocked because Joy was very devoted to the church. They didn't know why Joy would just leave. Some of them tried calling Joy, but her phone was not reachable. Two members even went to her place to check on her, but Joy was nowhere to be seen. The police tried to get more information from the church, but they refused to give any further details. This made Carol even more concerned for her daughter's safety and well-being. The investigation would continue, and the officers would search Joy's apartment. They also talked to her roommates and also searched the area around the church, but they could not find any leads. Officers would check Joy's phone and social media accounts, but there was no activity. One member seemed especially concerned about Joy. He had called her phone multiple times and had gone to her place several times looking for her. This member went by the name Israel. Originally from Nigeria, Israel had lived in the UK since 1997. He joined Israel United in Christ Church in 2016 after being introduced by his wife, and he became a dedicated member of the church, even rising to the rank of a soldier. The church described him as an enthusiastic member who always offered to help in any way. Police learned that Israel and his wife were good friends with Joy and would often offer her rides back to the campus from the church. When the police first talked to Israel, he told them that he last saw Joy at a church event on December 26th, and then he drove her to her home in Hatfield. Initially, the police were inclined to believe Israel's story, but as they delved deeper into the investigation, they uncovered several inconsistencies in his account. It was a Wednesday. I dropped her off on the 26th because my wife was pregnant. And at first, yes, on that day when I dropped her off, she was supposed to be spending the night with my wife. Because she normally stays with that device on time. This ultimately led to Israel's arrest and he would be charged for Joy's murder. The trial provided a clearer picture of the events that took place. It was revealed that instead of taking Joy home on December 26, Israel took her to his home while his wife was away, claiming that she was upset and wanted to leave the church. Israel stated that he saw Joy as a daughter and that nothing inappropriate happened between them. However, the court heard evidence of text messages that he sent to Joy in March 2018, which showed a completely different picture. On December 28th, Israel's car was seen in Stevenage, and Joy's phone signal was detected in the same area, leading the prosecution to believe that Joy was already dead and Israel was searching for a place to dispose of her body. The court heard that on that same night, Israel removed her number from the church's chat group on Telegram to cover up his tracks. The police, however, found Joy's house keys inside Israel's car. After four weeks of trial, the jury reached a verdict, finding Israel guilty of Joy's murder. He was sentenced to a minimum of 17 years in prison. Despite the conviction, Joy's family was still unable to find closure as Israel refused to reveal where he had hidden her body. This only added to the family's grief and made it harder for them to come to terms with Joy's death. The trial may have brought an end to the legal proceedings, but for Joy's family, the pain and the search for answers will likely continue for a long time. I will see my daughter. I will see my girl.